special program in living color on NBC. Timex presents Jack Denny's 20th TV anniversary special. Starring Jack Denny with his guest stars, Bob Hope, Dinah Shore, special guest star, Frank Sinatra, with Mary Livingston and Dennis Day, Rochester, Mel Blanc, Frank Nelson, Benny Rubin, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Jack Benny's 20th Anniversary TV Special is brought to you by Timex, world's largest manufacturer of watches. Timex, the dependable watch. Precision made to wear with confidence. Timex, the fashionable watch. Style to wear with pride. Two important reasons why more people buy Timex than any other watch in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Don Wilson, and I'd like to say what a great personal thrill it is for me to have the honor of introducing the star of our show tonight on his 20th television anniversary. Now, as most of you know, I had the privilege of working with Jack since 1934, first in radio and then on television until he concluded his weekly series. Since then, of course, Jack has kept busy with specials, concerts, nightclubs, and personal appearances. And you want to know something? Not once did I ever hear from him. <laughs> Stop! But Jack's just doing great, and really, I'm very, very happy for him. But what about me? sitting out there in Palm Springs waiting for the phone to ring. For all he knows, I could be starving. What are you doing? Well, I'll admit, Jack has a lot of talent. But there is such a thing as loyalty, devotion, a spark of humanity. What is this? What's the matter? You're supposed to introduce me, that's all. Introduce yourself. <laughs> well, to continue with my anniversary special, what was he talking about? I mean, loyalty, devotion. What am I, a comedian or a cocker spaniel? Imagine him starving. He's got more meat on him than a pregnant hippopotamus. But ladies and gentlemen, I can hardly believe that it's been 20 years since my first TV show but it has. And you know, that first year, I only did two television shows. And when that worked out, I did four shows a year, then six, then 12, and finally, 36 shows a year. And here I am again, doing two a year. <laughs> Who knows, maybe next year I'll be back in radio. wouldn't be so bad. You know, there, some big, there were some big advantages to radio. Rehearsals were at a minimum. There were no retakes. You could wear the same suit year after year. What a great medium. <laughs> Let's see, I was in radio 18 years. I had three sponsors and four suits. <laughs> no, no, I had four sponsors and three suits. <laughs> but I must admit, I really was worried when I first went into television. I'll tell you why. You see, in radio, 
The listening audiences created their own pictures. But on television, now let's take my vault, <laughs> you see, that, that, that looked different. My living room wasn't what they expected. I didn't really look cheap. <laughs> The only true picture was Phil Harris. <laughs> Who else would lead an orchestra lying face down? <laughs> now, to get on with my anniversary program, I'm especially excited tonight to have with me a lovely lady who was the guest on my very first television show, Miss Dinah Shore. Yeah. Yes, sir. Dinah, hmm? remember that first show we did in New York? Oh, do I ever. We were both nervous wrecks. Right. In fact, we were so nervous right after the show, we went over to Sardi's, and we had a couple of drinks, and we relaxed. Yeah. And you remember what happened? We were too young, and they wouldn't serve us any alcohol. <laughs> I was too young. You had a beer. <laughs> oh, that's right. You just sat there and ate my pretzels. I mean. <laughs> just sat there and ate your pretzels. Yeah, but you know, Dinah, <laughs> I can still remember those reviews of my opening show. Weren't they awful? Oh, yeah. Especially that one critic who said, after seeing Jack Benny for the first time on TV last night, I predict he won't last a month. <laughs> yeah. Well, that one didn't count. It was in a medical journal. <laughs> but, you see, it was the daily papers that hurt. Nearly every one of them said, Jack Benny opened on television last night and died. Imagine, died. No, the, the Christian Science Monitor didn't say you died. What'd they say? Uh, the Christian Science Monitor said Jack Benny made the transition peacefully. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember something I felt like better that. then. Yeah, That's right. something like that, yeah. But, Dinah, as long as we are reminiscing, yes. who do you consider, say, the greatest television comedian of the last 20 years? Oh. Oh, like, oh, boy, that's t I couldn't do that, Jack. I mean, I, I, how could you ask me to single out one comedian? It's well, not all right, fair all to right. the others. Well, I agree, I agree. Okay. But forget me. <laughs> Look, I'm not fishing for compliments. No. You're entitled to your opinion. Who do you think is the best comedian on television? I promise you I won't be offended. Well, all right, if you promise you won't be offended, I would have to say Red Skelton. Why him? <laughs> You, you said I was entitled to my own opinion, Jack. Well, what do you know about comedy? <laughs> You're a singer. Go ahead and sing. Okay. Yeah. Aren't you even going to introduce my song? Introduce it yourself. Jack, this is your 20th anniversary, and I, I want to do the anniversary waltz with you. Oh. Oh, how we Magic. 
All of a sudden, my heart sings The funny way you hold your head The crazy things you've often said The way your hair won't stay in place The wind and rain upon your face Your little laugh and half surprise All of a sudden, my heart sings. Once upon a time, there were three beautiful mannequins who lived in a little boutique. Every day they were dressed in the most beautiful clothes in the world, and they should have been very happy. But alas, they were very sad, because something was always missing. A different watch for every different look they wore. And so one night, when they were all alone, story is we haven't met a girl yet who doesn't think the timex wardrobe of watches is a fabulous idea especially at timex prices ladies and gentlemen you know i was just thinking for a nice easy going guy like i am i don't know of anyone who has the problems with the simplest things okay, like for hey. instance if i go in if i go in At the, at the telegram, you. telegram for you. Yes, well, thank you, but why didn't you... Wait a minute. You know, you look exactly yes, I like know. Red Skelton. Yes, you're the tenth person that said that this week. <laughs> the, uh, I'm a dreamer, ain't I? I should have given them a tip, really. But it wasn't on the cue card. <laughs> well, let's see what this is. Oh, this is a telegram from my closest friend, George Burns. It says, Dear Jack, this is a talking telegram. Hold it up to your ear and listen carefully. A talking telegram? Never heard of such a thing, really. Only an idiot would stand before 40 million people holding a telegram to his ear. Well, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. That's a great line I just had. Now, 
As I was saying before I was interrupted by nothing, I don't know of anyone who has had the problems that I have had. If I went into a restaurant, I would be insulted by the waiter. When I go Christmas shopping, trouble. Every time I went to a railroad station or an airport, they'd drive me crazy. Now, last week, I thought it would be different. I had to fly to Mexico City for my sponsor's convention. So Rochester drove me to the airport. Attention, please. Attention. Flight 56 to Chicago, Washington, and Philadelphia, boarding at gate five. Oh, Rochester, oh, come I'm in. over here. Rochester, I want to tell you, it was so nice of you to drive me down here. I really could have taken a cab, you know, from Beverly Hills. You could have taken a cab from where you made me park. <laughs> Look, Rochester, it was only eight blocks away. We've never been that close before. Now, come on, I'll, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Oh, my, good. Well, wait a minute. I want to make sure first that I've got time. Wait a minute, where... Oh, there you go. <clears throat> oh, pardon me, sir, but when can passengers board Flight 18 to Mexico City? I don't know. <laughs> well, will it be leaving on time? I don't know. <laughs> Well, does it originate here or come from somewhere else? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Some information clerk. What's the matter with you? Well, it happens that I have a malfunctioning of the pineal gland, which causes a subcranial pressure on the tissue-like covering of the cortex. And that, in turn, creates a diminution of the dorsal cerebellum. That's what's the matter with me. I'm terribly sorry. What do you call that condition? I don't know. Well, never mind. Rochester, uh, I want to validate this ticket. Listen, I want you to check these bags and make sure they're not overweight. Overweight? Yes, you see, you have to be very careful because when they're overweight, they charge you extra. Mm -hmm. You know, like 88 cents a pound to Mexico City, that's where we're going, and, and 64 cents a pound to Acapulco, and 52 cents a pound to Tijuana. I've got an idea. What? You go to Mexico City and send your clothes to Tijuana. <laughs> you could do me a favor, just check the bag. I'll be right back. Let's see where is it? Oh, Mister, Mister. Yeah. Are you, are you the ticket clerk? You no, know, I'm a seven forty-seven with a mustache. <laughs> Now stop with that, will you please? I remember you, you know. Listen, I want my ticket validated. Here. Well, Mexico City, what are we running away from this time? <laughs> I'm not running away from anything. Just validate my ticket. There. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute. I gave you a round-trip ticket. You didn't give me the return here. Well, you can't blame me for trying. Flights 23 from Dallas, now arriving at gate 11. Peggy, Peggy, here I am. Over here, Peggy. Hey. Dennis. Dennis. 
Dennis Day. Oh, hi. Hi, my goodness, is this a surprise meeting you here. Yeah, what a small world, huh? Yeah, gee, Dennis, it's so good to see you. I can't tell you how many times I've thought about you these past few years. I've missed you, kid. I really have. Hey, Peggy, hey, look who's here. It's... Uh, what was that name again? <laughs> what is that name again? Dennis. Hey, what a coincidence. That's my name, too. <laughs> Dennis, now stop with that silly talk again. You know, you know my name is Benny Jack Benny. Oh, yeah. You see, Peggy, I told you he doesn't look any better in person. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him. I think you look wonderful. Well, thank you, Peggy. Thanks. Tell me, Dennis, what have you been... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want you to meet the kids. kids. Hey, kids. Uh, here's... Uh, Your kids? Uh-huh. Tommy, this is Pat, and Margaret, Eileen, Danny, and Therese. My goodness. And Kathy and Mary Kate. Gosh. <laughs> now, what was that you were saying? Well, I was going to ask you what you've been doing, but forget it. <laughs> now, um, gosh, you got eight kids. Where are you all going? Oh, nowhere. We just came down here to meet the twins. You have twins beside? <laughs> here, here they are. Hey. <laughs> what deduction? <laughs> Yeah, uh, me too. Hey, come on, kids. Let's all get some bubble gum. <laughs> Goodbye, baby. Come on, Dennis. Well, watch this, Mr. Benny. What? Mr. Benny, you were right. Your luggage was 10 pounds overweight. 10 pounds? Well, how much is that going to cost me? Nothing. What? Nothing? You see that fellow sitting right there? Yes. He's going to visit his sister, so I put all your things in his bags. Well, Rochester, before you do a thing like that, you ought to check with me, asking a complete stranger. Pardon me, mister, but did that man over there put some of my clothes in your luggage? She. <laughs> well, are you, are you going to Mexico City? She. <laughs> Are you taking flight 18? Si. What's your name? Si. Si? Si. I understand you're, you're going to visit your sister. Si. I'm afraid to ask this next one. <laughs> What's her name? Sue. <laughs> Sue? She. Well, look, Sue. <laughs> I mean, C. Sai. Sai. C. 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 Yes, C. Well, never mind, but thanks very much for doing me that favor. The next time you make arrangement, check with me first, will you please? See? <laughs> Attention, please. Attention. Passengers on flight number 18 to Mexico City. This flight will be delayed for approximately one hour and 20 minutes. How do you like An hour and 20 minutes. Now what are we going to do? What about that cup of coffee you were talking about? Well, I'll get mine on the plane. <laughs> this is awful. An hour and 20 minutes. Well, I, at least, you know, I don't have to sit here and listen to that crazy announcer they used to have here. You remember him? Mm. That crazy guy, that announcer? He used to drive me nuts. Uh -huh. Attention, please. Attention. Plane leaving at gate five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Among us. <laughs> 
Now, now, where did he come from? I was out to dinner. <laughs> attention, please, attention. Passengers getting off at Cucamonga, watch your step. We do not land there. Well, I'm not gonna stay here for an hour and 20 minutes and listen to that crazy guy. I'm going over and see if I can get on another plane. Correction, please. Flight 18 to Mexico City will not be delayed. Hey, hey you're not right. going to say goodbye? Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> no, goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye, Mr. Have a good, good trip. I'll see you when I get I back. Know, I'll see you. Call attention, me. Attention, please. Call me. Attention. attention. Plane leaving for Seattle, Vancouver, Fairbanks, and Juneau, Alaska. <laughs> I guess they must be going on the family plan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Zorro. What is this gentleman holding up? It is a round, golden colored object. It is a, a watch. This watch is water resistant and dust resistant, is it not, sir? Correct, Soldo. But it isn't an ordinary watch. It is more accurate than an ordinary watch, right, sir? Correct, Soldo. You never have to wind this watch. It is an electric watch, right, sir? Correct, Soldo. Soldo, Soldo, the gentleman would like to know if you can tell him what the watch costs. Of course. This electric watch cost you exactly $129.95. There must be some interference, Zoldo. Oh, sir, you must concentrate very hard. You paid uh, $149.95. $120.75? $99.16? $60? The electric Timex, an incredible $25. Who'd ever guess an electric watch could cost so little with automatic camera? I'm Bob Hope. For those of you who have never seen me before, I can't believe it. No, I don't have to tell you that I'm thrilled to be here for Jack's 20th anniversary. It was either this or send a present. Now, you know, Jack went into TV just about the time Dr. Kildare delivered Marcus Welby. You know, I've known Jack Benny for a long time, and people are always saying for a man of his age, he looks remarkable. Anything his age looks remarkable. <laughs> we have redwood trees in California that are not that old. <laughs> or that wrinkled. Of course, the reason Jack looks so good, he takes care of himself. He sleeps like a baby in bed at eight and up every morning at six, and that kills the whole day. <laughs> now, then he has a little pablum. His nurse throws him over her shoulder and burps him. And she puts him on the floor and lets him play with his money. <laughs> That's a lot of fun, because he still has the big bills. <laughs> you know, Jack told me... Jack told me before the show that as far as girls are concerned, he still feels the same now as he did 30 years ago. That's sad, isn't it? Imagine going out on a date and it doesn't make any difference if the girl is Phyllis Diller or Raquel Welsh. I want to 
I'll tell you one thing. Jack's for all for women's rights. He says, as far as he's concerned, there's no difference between men and women. And I believe it. As far as he's concerned. <laughs> now, Jack and Mary have been married 43 years. And I want to tell you, it was a, that's true. Isn't that nice? Yes, sir. And it was a beautiful sight as they went down the aisle. The way Jack walks, they couldn't tell which was the bride. <laughs> What a wedding. He's so hammy, it took him two weeks to realize that Mary wasn't along on the honeymoon. <laughs> but I love him, and I love the way Jack works. He ought to team up with Perry Como and make still pictures. <laughs> I first met Jack when we were both starving in New York. I accidentally dropped a dime in a subway grating, and he refused to hand it back up to me. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Bob. Wait. Look, at you've said enough nice things about me. But I'm not through yet, Jack. <laughs> what do you mean you're not through? Well, Jack, I have a little surprise for you. Would you uh, bring it in? I think you'll like this. Uh, what is this? Well, what do you got there, Bob? This is just a plaque given to you by your staff, the network executives, your sponsor, and everyone that has been associated with you, including myself. That's thrilling. <laughs> You know, I could cry. Well, well, try that. No. no. <laughs> That's nice. What does it say, Bob? Well, let me tell you. Thanks for the memory, your flair for jollity, your fiddling so off-key. With just a bit more practice, any young man you could be. So thank you so much. And thanks for the memory of love that you inspire as birthday cakes grow higher the candles for each year could cause another frisco fire A frisco fire so thanks sarah lee sarah lee you'll never get any older at least from your head to your shoulder but don't try to get any bolder and make a date Cause it's too late <laughs> So thanks for the memory Of friendship you and I Have shared through years gone by I've been your pal and you've been mine That will never die <laughs> Thank you so much Wow, that was better spacing oh, that was great, that was great Bob, that was just great there you are. There you are. That's yours. Thank you. Now, Bob, I'd like to sing something for you. All right. Can it be the plaque that set you back at least a buck and a half? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know I have another big treat for you. At this time, I would like to introduce my next guest. This great artist has all... What is that? Hey, fellas, what's that noise? It's a helicopter. It's coming this way. A helicopter? In here? That's all right, Frankie. Did you fly in from Palm Springs? No, I was having a cup of coffee across the street. <laughs> you flew over here from across the street in a helicopter? Somebody stole my elephant. <laughs> well, that I don't understand at all. Look, Jack, who are we kidding? I wasn't just across the street having a cup of coffee. Oh, then you did fly in from Palm Springs. Yes, I did fly in from Palm Springs. Oh, then nobody stole your elephant. No, that part is true. <laughs> well, Listen, 
Well, Jack, well, I came here to congratulate you on your 20th uh, anniversary in television, you know, Thank like you, everybody Frankie. else has been Thank doing. And on honor of this occasion, I'd like to sing a song. Frankie, that's one of the nicest things that ever happened to me. Now, wait a minute. There must have been nicer things than that. Well, I danced with Dean Martin. <laughs> but that's all. By the way, Jack, <laughs> after the show, what? after the show, uh, I'm planning to go over and see a, uh, an old movie, and it's a double feature. I wondered maybe if you'd like to come along with me if you got the time. A double feature? What mm -hmm. are they? The Kissing Bandit and the Horn Blows at Midnight. <laughs> Where are they playing? In the drive-in on Pico Boulevard. In a drive-in? You mean an open-air theater? Where else would they run those two pictures? <laughs> Gee, with pollution and everything? <laughs> Well, I'll be your guest. Now, what are you going to sing, Frankie? Well, I thought I'd just ad lib something for about... Ad lib? Ad lib, yeah. yeah. That's from the Latin. I know, Cesar Romero told me. <laughs> Go ahead, sing, Dennis. Frank. <laughs> well, my story is much too sad to be told, but practically everything leaves me totally cold The only exception I know is the case When I'm out on a quiet spree Fighting vainly the old ennui Then I suddenly turn and see Your fabulous Face. I get no kick from champagne Mere alcohol, it doesn't move me at all So tell me why should it be true That I get a kick out of you Some like the perfume from Spain Brack I'm sure that if I took even one look It would bore me to rip Thickly to however I do Get a, a kick out of you I get a kick every time I see you standing there before me. I get a kick, though it's clear to see that you obviously, you do not adore. No kick in a plane Flying too high With some gal in the sky Is my idea of nothing to do Yet I get a, a kick out of you I get a kick every time Every time I see you standing there before me I get a kick, though it's clear to see That you obviously, you do not adore I get no kick in a place Flying too high with some gal in the sky is my idea nothing to do. Yet I get a kick. You give me a boot. I get a kick. 
You're looking at America's dirtiest course, the Mile of Mud Track at Naples, Florida. And this is John Cameron Swayze reporting for Timex. We're here to test the durability of the Timex water-resistant watch by putting it through the same pounding these swamp buggies take. And here to help us is Doug Hendry, sheriff of Collier County. There's the watch. Here we go. Well, you saw the pounding our swamp buggy took. You can see how I look. Now let's see how our Timex took it. There it is. Proof that a Timex is really water resistant and sturdy. It's dust resistant and it's certainly mud resistant too. And handsome as it is rugged. There you have the famous Timex Marlin and next to it, the Timex Sportster designed for smaller wrists. Water resistant, dust resistant, built to take a beating. In fact, tests show that Timex watches withstand an impact of 2000 Gs and continue to run accurately. No wonder more people buy Timex than any other watch in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a confession to make. Right now is when my wife, Mary Livingston, was supposed to appear on this show for her first time in 15 years. But she was so nervous that she just wouldn't do it. And I offered to make an exchange with her. If she appeared on my show, I would appear in her bedroom. Now you know why she was nervous. <laughs> I think I'll call her up and tell her we all miss her. I hope it isn't busy. I knew it. Every time I want to talk to Mary, the line is busy. I never saw anything like it. Hello. Mary, who were you just talking to? <laughs> Nobody. I told you a thousand times for two dollars more, we can have a private line. <laughs> All right, I'll think about it. Now, aren't you sorry you're not on my show? I don't know. I'm not watching it. <laughs> what? Mary, I know you're too nervous to be on the show, but what excuse have you got for, for not watching it? Because you're too sneaky. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It means that if you knew I was watching the show, you'd have hidden a camera in this room and I would be one of your guests. Oh, Mary, how can you say that? How about the last time you asked me to be on your show? You sent me a painting of Betsy Ross making the American flag. So what? That was a gift. <laughs> what are you, what are you laughing at? Some gift. Betsy had a camera hidden under the flag. Oh, Mary. Stop making things up. Now listen. We're all going out to dinner after the show, so get dressed and hurry on over and, and join us. Okay, Jack. Oh, Janet. Janet. Yes, Mrs. <laughs> Bates. <laughs> Janet, I'm going to the studio and have dinner with Jack. I know, I saw you on television. <laughs> oh, you must be wrong. I wasn't on Jack's show. You weren't? Take a look at Betsy. She did it again. <laughs> How do you like that, Jack? He's so sneaky, but he's awfully cute. You know, ladies and gentlemen, ordinarily, I am not one who dwells into the past. I think ahead. But when I look back over the 20 years of shows I've done on TV, 
There were so many wonderful guests that I cannot express my appreciation in words. So I have compiled a lot of film clips. You will remember all of these stars. I know I will.
Fascinating, wasn't it? Imagine all those great stars besides my regular cast of Dennis, Don, Rochester, Phil, Mary. All those years went by so fast, and before you know it, it'll be another 20 years. Gee, imagine 20 years from now. I can just picture it. 20 years from now. forgot about Dennis Day. <laughs> Come in, Danny. Well, that's right. <laughs> well, hello, Rochester. Here's my hat. And here's my... Oh! Oh, I've got a seizure. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Here, 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 here are my sweater right. and my bicycle clips. <laughs> clips? When did you get a bicycle? Oh, I didn't. I used them to keep my varicose veins together. <laughs> This is Bob Road to Medicare Hope. <laughs> a funny thing happened to me on the way over here. I made it. <laughs> Dennis, I thought you were going to pick me up. No, I was, but I stopped at the hospital to visit my wife. Oh, how is Peggy getting along? Oh, she's fine. The baby weighed eight pounds, three ounces. <laughs> Crosby, he'll kill himself. <laughs> come in. Hi, everybody. Hello, Johnny. Yeah. I've got to stop doing that. <laughs> hey, Donna. What's new? Not me. <laughs> Well, now, Rochester, as long as everybody's here, why don't you go call Mr. Benny? Yeah. Okay, here he comes now. Hello, everybody. of its kind. It never needs winding. No, nobody ever gave her an electric watch before. And it could be the beginning of something.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's our 20th anniversary television special. Now, I would like to thank Bob Hope, Frank Sinatra, Dinah Shore, Lucille Ball, Dean Martin, Red Skelton, George Burns, Dennis Day, Don Wilson, Rochester, Mel Blanc, Frank Nelson, Benny Rubin, and especially my wife, Mary Livingston. And I would also want to thank all of our viewers throughout the world. Mr. and Mrs. Tony Ames, Miss Terry Arco, Mr. and Mrs. Albert Aaron, Mrs. Andrew Aronson, Mr. and Mrs. John Mrs. Jerry Mrs. Samuel Mrs. Robert Mr. and Mrs. Lucas Aberdeen, Miss Sally Aberdeen, Miss... Jack Benny's 20th anniversary TV special has been brought to you by Timex, world's largest manufacturer of watches. Timex, the dependable watch, precision made to wear with confidence. Timex, the fashionable watch, styled to wear with pride. Two important reasons why more people buy Timex than any other watch in the world. Also appearing on tonight's program are Chris Ullman and David Westbrook.